Oh, hello. It's just me, Steve, groving to tones in my earphones. You've probably noticed me wearing these around the shop quite a bit. They're a technological marvel that allows me to rock out to my own homegrown beatbox music I record myself. They are sleek, yellow, and offer no hearing protection at all as they are entirely made from two 50-watt speakers strapped directly to my head. I break down woke beats, then make my own cross between jazz scat and Euro dance music. Oh, with my mouth! Oh, where did I learn to dance? I didn't. You may be asking how these cordless earphones are even possible. Well, friend, if you look close, they aren't cordless at all. They plug in nice and snug right here. That's right. And the other end goes in the lightning port on my iPhone. It's a tight fit. Perfect. Uh, hey, my phone still works. I was doodling my thoughts about a Damascus experiment up here in the corner of the sheet of paper when my six-year-old came by and scribbled out this pattern down here on the same sheet. It looks like she wants me to make up a bar of 15 and 20 and 1095, then cut it into two billets. One will be turned on its side and drawn out so the layers or lines run lengthways, and the other will be cut, stacked, and drawn out sideways so the lines run 90 degrees to the lines of the first billet. Then these are going to be stacked on top of each other in alternating layers. It looks good, my mini-me youngin. It looks good. Here's our alternating 15 and 20 and 1095. Let's forge up the main piece, the one that our other two billets are going to come from. Now just because we drew up a nice picture with good parallel lines and perpendicular lines, it doesn't mean our final billet will appear that way at all. Those layers are going to be mushed, warped, and skewed, but the overall look I hope will be somewhat intact. Alright, here's our first bar of alternating 15 and 20 and 1095 steel. Let's cut it up, stack it, and get the pieces welded together and increase our layer count to 150. When that's done, it's time to cut it into our two separate billets, which we will manipulate to make their lines run perpendicular to each other. Alright, on build number one, we're just turning it on its side and drawing it out so the layers or the lines will run vertical the length of the flat bar. Billet number two is drawn out in a more typical orientation such that the parallel layers are running along the flattened axis much like you would normally see or expect in a piece of pattern welded Damascus. So billets one and two are basically done. Let's etch them up and see what the differences are. We're supposed to cut up billet two into pieces and stack them next to each other and draw them out lengthways, but I'm starting to wonder exactly what that's going to look like and whether or not I have enough material to get this done. All right, billet two has been cut up. We're going to forge weld them back together to increase the layer count. And this is sort of where things get tricky because the last part of this operation is drawing the billet out sideways or against the planes of the welds, which is pretty risky. That really stresses those welds out. We're essentially trying to pull the layers of our billet apart under the press while we manipulate it sideways like this. And 
Billet 2 be done. We're going to get it cut up and stacked, cleaned up, just like Billet 1. And we're going to put these in alternating layers in the canister to save material. Our billet is getting smaller and smaller the more we manipulate it, so the canister can help keep us from wasting some of it. You notice the billet isn't really sticking to the canister and vice versa because I've got some titanium paste in there made out of titanium dioxide powder that I mix with water. So that's really cool. You can see sort of the bigger pattern there. The finer pattern is a little bit hidden because it's just too compacted. So, you know, my original intent was to stack it like this and draw it out this way. I'm sort of wondering if that's the right decision because that's really going to squish these together. And that's sort of pretty. Or should I stack them like this and then draw it out this way? We're gonna draw it out sideways. Yeah. There's some footage missing here. I don't know really what happened to it, but as I was drawing this out against the grain, a delamination appeared. I could ignore it, forge on and grind it away later, but it might propagate and tear further into the billet. I could have ground it away, but I didn't know how deep it was or if it might reappear further into the billet once it looked like it was gone. So I just cut the billet in two to see what the story was, and it turns out it was quite superficial and probably could have been ground away successfully, so <laughs> there goes a third of my material. Par for the course for old Steve. So I'm going to forge out the remainder represented by that white box. And we're going to send it over to Zane Birch at ZBJ Knives. We've got a collaboration going here. He's going to make an awesome knife. I'm going to auction that to charity. Apply the emergency brakes. I've got some bad news. So what I'm intending to do is to draw out our final build in this direction so that it looks like this. And as you'll see in a minute, when I work with that tiny extra piece I cut off, that's what happens. But with this larger chunk that's going to Zane, I welded the handle on the wrong side and it gets drawn out in a different direction. You have to go see his channel to see what that means for the final result. It's pretty interesting. All right, we can resume. All right, it's on the small side, but I think a reasonably sized hidden tang knife could be made from it. And I can't wait to see what Zane does with this. It's four and three quarters by three eighths inch wide. It'll be a challenge, but I'm sure he's up for it. I'm going to take that tiny piece we cut off the end for the delamination, and I'll try to make a small knife with it. It's not really the focus of this video, but I'm going to show you little bits and pieces of that. Alright, we're going to get this etched up for a little tease of the pattern here, but you can go to my Instagram account and look at the final pictures here for this rinky dink little knife. But most importantly, go look at Zane Birch Nye's video to see the final collaboration effort. That piece is going to be auctioned to charity. Alright guys, have a good one. The beat says yes. Is this Germany? The beat says yes. The beat says yes.